and welcome to the Her Business Podcast, the show for women growing and scaling a business. I'm Susie Daphnis. Today we're talking about whether it's time to stop winging it and instead make a plan for your business growth. Over the past 20 plus years, I've met thousands of women in business from all around Australia and New Zealand, and many of them seem to share similar challenges. They're feeling overwhelmed, they're lacking focus, they don't have enough clients, and there's always too much to do. And they're not getting enough reward for their efforts and not meeting their goals soon enough. But there's one very specific thing that we teach business owners to do that quickly transforms their overwhelm to a feeling of excitement and renewed energy for their business. They get a laser focus and importantly, they start getting more sales and are able to reach their goal sooner. So if you're wondering what this wonder drug is, I'm going to tell you. (laughs) It's something that's been around for a long time and it's something that is definitely not the latest fad. In fact, I think it's something that is drastically underrated by most business owners. And it starts with not winging it in business. It starts with actually planning. Now, before you say, Susie, planning is so boring, just stay with me for a few minutes because I promise you, this is the one thing that you could be doing right now to get out from under that stressed out, overwhelmed feeling that you might have around your business and finally start getting rewarded for all your hard work. Now, planning does not have to be a long, drawn-out process, and it doesn't have to result in a 200-page plan that nobody ever reads. And the thing is, it can actually even be fun. Let me prove it to you, (laughs) because you might be doubting me at this point. So here at Her Business, we work with small business owners to help them grow and succeed. Now, whether it's through our Her Business Network monthly trainings or our business coaching program, or even our year-long mastermind program, we work with business owners on many levels to improve their business results. And I get up close and very personal with these results. I'm very committed to their results over any 12-month period. And I get to see firsthand what makes a difference, what they do that makes a difference, and what they do that does not. And that's why the very first thing that we teach people who join the Her Business Network is to embrace planning. And at first, they're reluctant or even perhaps confused about how to approach it, because until that point, maybe they've just been winging it, and maybe they've had some success along the way anyway. But here where the problems begin. When we are only winging it and we don't have a clear plan, it's hard to bring people around us to help us grow our business. So if you think about the moment you bring on a team member or you work with a new supplier, your plans are going to make it so much easier to allow others to work with you effectively. And even if it is just you in the business, a solopreneur moving the business forward on your own, the minute you have a plan that outlines where you are going, where you are heading and how you're going to get there, the pressure comes way down and you feel so much more focus and clarity. Now, in her book, Grit, Angela Duckworth, I've talked about her book here before, it's one of my favorites, she shares with us in the book the planning structure that the world's most successful and gritty actors, athletes, business owners, inventors, people from all walks of life who've been successful, she gives us the planning structure that they use to set and get their goals. And it's a very simple hierarchical planning structure. And when I saw it, I threw my hands up with joy because it is very similar to the simple planning process that we've been sharing with our members for over 20 years. Now, when we share this planning process, it's as if a light bulb goes (laughs) off in their head and the impact is very profound. I've seen people double their incomes, open up new markets, release new successful products, discover lucrative new marketing channels using this process. And as a result, over the past few years, these business owners have gone from feeling ambivalent at best and downright resistant at worst to absolutely loving planning. So much so that we've even created our very own Her Business calendar and planning guidelines for our members. Now, depending on which one of our Her Business programs you're a part of, um, I might be helping you with a monthly plan, just having a 30-day plan, what your top priorities are. Or in our coaching program, we work on quarterly plans. And in our... um, Uh, mastermind program, we work on an annual plan. In fact, we hire out a room, we get the caterer in, we provide colored pens and large sheets of paper and a planner and internet connection and some space and time for this room full of women to really go for it, to really map out their plan for the next year. And this is so important. It's become one of their favorite days of the year. And it's one of my favorite things to do. In fact, every year we dedicate the month of November 
into creating our plans for the next year. And then throughout the year, we touch back on planning again, because we're always revising our plans. And when we build a planning culture into our businesses and our lives, it makes growing our business so much easier. Because we're giving ourselves dedicated headspace to work on our plan. And like I said, many business owners tell me how much they really don't like planning in the beginning because they're unsure where to start or perhaps plans they've done in the past uh, ended up stashed in a drawer or gathering dust. And so what I'm going to share with you today is a simple three-step approach to planning that you're going to love. And not only that, it's going to give you a really practical plan that you can use every day in your business. Because as the saying goes, When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And a lack of planning can create a lot of stress in your business and leave you feeling overwhelmed or stuck in a permanent state of procrastination or constantly following that next bright, shiny object that comes along in the hope that it's going to be the thing that solves all your problems. So how do you create a plan that gives you clarity and gets you results? Well, it all starts with a vision. Now, a vision is a vivid picture of where you want your business to go in the future, whether that future is the next 30 days, the next quarter, the next year, the next two years. And so I wanted to give you a couple of examples of visions because we really need to have our vision before we create a plan that's going to get us to our vision. Does that make sense? So if we look at some of the big brands like Amazon, their vision is to be the earth's most customer centric company to build a place where people can come to find and discover anything they might want to buy online. And they're really going down that path of that vision. Our vision, her or her business, is to help businesswomen reach their full potential in business and do what they love every day. And I've got a couple of examples here from some of our members, women who are growing small businesses, um, and I wanted to share these with you. So the first one is from Paula Holmberg of Cuffley Nutrition. Now, hers is to give women back their freedom and not be constrained by their gut problems, right? So you can tell from her vision what line of work Paula is in. And then we have Debbie Minette of Can Do VA Solutions. Now, she says her vision is to empower business owners to embrace outsourcing their administration and redirect the time saved to achieve their goals. Sounds pretty good, right? And then Erica Webb, her business is in the area of yoga and Pilates, yoga and Pilates, say that properly. (laughs) And she says, my business vision is to help hundreds of women foster a deep sense of self-kindness through movement in the form of yoga, Pilates and somatic exercise. She says, I want to give women movement tools that they can collect and use to help themselves feel well so that they can be and do all the things they desire in the world. So there are three very clear visions from women just like you. And this is where we start. When we have a vision, we can then align um, these other three levels that I'm going to give you, these three levels of planning to those visions. So I'm going to give you the three levels and then I'm going to explain each one. So level one is your strategic objectives. Level two is your projects. And level three is your actions. So let me now explain. So typically, your level one strategic objectives, we're going to look at the next 12 months and the big things that you want to achieve. So this might include things like launching a new product, product, opening up a new market, or implementing a new communication system, for instance. Once you are clear on your level one strategic objectives, then you can figure out the specific level two projects that you need to implement to achieve each of your strategic objectives. So for instance, Last year here at Her Business, one of our vision, well, I told you our vision is to empower women to reach their full potential and to do what they love every day. And so one of our strategic objectives was to increase our mailing list size and the women that we reach. So we were on a uh, a lead generation drive. And so once we had that clear that lead generation was our strategic objective and we put a number around that, so we had a specific goal, then we could determine what projects we would do that year in order to meet that strategic objective. And so for us, we did three main lead generation activities. We put out a quiz, we created a free PDF download called 20 Must Enter Awards for Women Business Owners. And we ran a summit. We ran a summit um, over a one-week period, which generated over 4,000, close to 5,000 leads. So those projects were specifically aligned to the strategic objective of lead generation, which is tied to our vision. So for instance, if your goal was to launch a new product, you might have 
a few, um, if that was your strategic objective, then the kind of projects that you might do under that goal of launching a new product might be things like a research project to better understand your market. That might take a chunk of time. Then you might have a design project where you're going to actually develop your new product. And then you might have a production project where you actually build your product and service and so on. So we have our strategic objective, we decide what projects we're going to do, and then we get down to the nitty gritty. Level three is where you map out all the various actions that you need to complete each project. So they are a hierarchy, starting with your vision, then your strategic objectives. And in any 12-month period, you don't want to have more than about three or four strategic objectives. Then your projects under each strategic objective. And then the little minutia, the details of every little thing that needs to happen within a project. So for example, I gave you earlier... We had the project of, um, we created a quiz. And so some of the tasks, there were a lot of tasks, but we had to design the questions. We had to determine what platform we were going to use. We had to figure out what emails we were going to send people with their results. And then what would happen to them after they got the results? What would we talk to them about next? So we had to find a you know graphic designer to design the reports. We had to find the software, as I said. We needed to test the software. We needed to uh, write ads for Facebook to promote the quiz, right? So all those little details, often we can look at a project and we start at the detail rather than starting, why am I doing this? Why am I creating this course? Why am I designing this new product? Why am I, you know, hiring this team member? Why am I reviewing my systems? And so what we want to do is tie all that back to your plan. So let me just revise that for you. So with your level one strategic objectives, you're looking at the whole year. With your level two projects, you want to look at these on a month by month or quarter by quarter basis. And your level three tasks, this is what you're doing every single day. And what that means is that you're always moving closer to your strategic objectives. And it means you're not wasting time working on things and that are not aligned to your strategic objectives. And it's a really great way to bring your team around you and be really focused on the things that are going to move the needle in your business. So there's no more lack of direction, no more overwhelm when you focus on these three areas. Well, so you start with your vision for one, and then you go to your strategic objectives, your projects, and your actions. Now your vision becomes more of a reality every single day. So are you ready to do some planning? So I encourage you to make a start. So if you're a solopreneur, looking at your top priorities for the next 30 days might be just a great place to start. Where do, what do I want to be doing in 30 days? But if you're a micropreneur with a small team, then how can you put together a quarterly project or a quarterly plan that's going to help bring your team around and keep you really focused? You know, you might look at things like, when am I going to run my main promotions? Or when am I going to introduce that new product to the market? Or what times of year of business are usually slow? And what could we do in that time? What promotional activity could we do to really inject some energy and revenue into the business at that time? Any project requires a plan. So spending even a little bit of time doing your planning, mapping out whether it's your marketing plans or your financial plan, all these things are going to help you get real clarity and purpose and direction in your business. And without proper planning and preparation, you are really setting yourself up for mediocre results. And if not failure, then ad hoc results. So here's the key though. Once you have a plan, you want to get into action. That is when things start to happen. No overthinking, no over planning, no procrastinating. Just take the next action and the next action and the next action in your plan. But can you understand how if you don't have a plan, you are taking actions, but they're not necessarily leading to the goal. So where to from here? I want to be able to further support you. I want to know what you're planning. And so there's a couple of things that you could do. If you're a member of the Her Business Network, of course, you know we've got our private Facebook group and you can ask for support in there with your plans. If you're not yet a member of the Her Business Network, I want to invite you to join the free Her Business community group over at Facebook. This is a new community we just launched where you'll find some resources and like-minded women. And this is somewhere where you can hang out until the doors open again to the Her Business Network. And if that feels like the right time for you, then you can come on over and get the more in-depth accountability and support that we offer our members. So just search Facebook for Her Business Free Community for Women Business Owners or head on over to herbusiness.com forward slash 131, which is where you're going to find reference to what we spoke about here today. So 
I hope this is going to help you stop winning it, winging it and start to plan for your business success. As I said, it can be really fun. I get so excited when I see our members' plans and I see them post photos inside of our group of their planners, of sitting down with each other or with their partners or with their teams and planning out the quarter and the year. It gives you such a sense of control and power over your business. So if the easiest thing for you to do is just plan out your top three objectives for the next 30 days, then start there. If you want to go a little further and plan out the next quarter, then go there. Whatever you do, just start planning. Now, I want to hear from you. Go ahead and, as I said, join the free Facebook group if you're not a network member yet and let me know how you go with your planning. Um, Or you can actually email me. You can email me at podcast at herbusiness.com. I respond to every message and I'd love to know how you are going to bring more planning into your business. Now, before we go, I want to thank one of our fabulous listeners who left this review on Apple Podcasts. Now, I don't know this person's name. I do know that you're from the United States, but you put your name down um, in Apple Podcasts as MGHNCX. So I apologize. I can't give you a proper shout out because I don't know your name, but I want to say thank you so much because here's what you said. You said, great podcast for women in business, great podcast, delivery style and format. It's easy to jump around and pick the topics that apply to your needs. I've found helpful advice and inspiration in each that I've listened to. I plan to listen to more. Well, thank you so much for listening. And if you hear this and you think, hey, that's me, then do let me know your name because when you leave me your name and business name, I will definitely give you a shout out. I will look up your business and say something fabulous. Uh, If you haven't yet left a review, I would love for you to do that. I would love to be shouting out your name here. Plus, I appreciate the feedback. Um, And all we're asking for is honest reviews. So we would love to hear from you. And you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Now, if you enjoyed this topic, also let me know. There's a lot more where this came from. And once again, you can email me at podcast at herbusiness.com. Now, be sure to subscribe to the show to catch the next episode. We are on Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. And um, the next episode will be out in one week's time. I want to thank you so much for being with me here today. Join me next time on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now.